Ja, ich habe vielleicht eine etwas ausgefallene Meinung über eine emanzipierte Frau. Nach meiner Meinung sind es nicht die Frauen, die sich befreien müssen, sondern vor allen Dingen die Männer. Ich denke, dass diese ganzen Aufrufe zur Befreiung der Frau, wie sie momentan so sehr in Mode sind, dass sie nichts weiter sind als Erbauungsliteratur. Ich nenne sie deshalb Erbauungsliteratur, weil sie sowohl den Männern als auch den Frauen genau das sagen, was sie am liebsten hören. Nämlich den Frauen sagen sie, dass sie ja so arm sind und so unterdrückt. Und das gibt den Frauen eine fantastische Ausrede, aus dem System Ehe noch mehr herauszuholen, als sie sowieso schon tun. Und den Männern äh, sag, äh, sagt man, dass sie Tyrannen seien. Und die Männer hören das gern, sie halten das für, für ein Kompliment, sie finden das besonders männlich. Nach meiner Meinung verhält es sich aber im Großen und Ganzen doch ganz, ganz anders. Nach meiner Meinung werden die Männer einfach von den Frauen hemmungslos ausgebeutet. Sie werden zum Geldverdienen dressiert. Und I've read The Manipulated Man, Esther Villar's provocative work that sent shockwaves through the feminist and intellectual communities of the 1970s. Imagine the scene, it's 1971, and a young woman boldly claims that the true power dynamics in society are entirely different from what everyone believes. Villar's assertions that women, not men, hold the upper hand in societal manipulation caused an uproar sparking heated debates and fierce backlash. Und Drohungen, worauf beziehen sich die? Ach, auf alles, auf alles, auf dass man meine Bücher verbrennen sollte oder vernichten oder auch ganz persönlich, ja, dass man mich umbringt. Morddrohungen, ja, das ist, bekomme ich also jeden Monat mindestens eine, immer noch. Now, fast forward 50 years. How have Villar's claims held up against the relentless march of time and social progress? Have we truly shifted the paradigms she controversially challenged or do echoes of her arguments still resonate today? In this presentation, we will explore the seismic shifts and enduring constants in gender dynamics since Villar's era. We'll dive into the evolution of societal roles, scrutinize the remnants of Villar's assertions and reflect on what these changes tell us about the journey toward genuine equality. In particular, we'll be focusing on the first three chapters of Villar's book, The Slave's Happiness. What is a man? What is a woman? This is part one of our video presentation, where we contrast the radical perspectives of the past with the nuanced realities of the present, uncovering what has changed, what has remained steadfast, and what it all means for the future of gender relations. So buckle up for this dive into time, controversy, and the relentless quest for truth, one that is sure to be thought-provoking. Let's talk about it. Now it's time for us to get into this and do what we gotta do. Because we men ain't we? Yeah! We men ain't we? Yeah! Women let men work for them, think for them, and take on their responsibilities. In fact, they exploit them. Yet, since men are strong, intelligent, and imaginative, while women are weak, unimaginative and stupid, why isn't it men who exploit women? Reading this chapter reminded me of this quote, the best way to keep a prisoner from escaping is to make sure he never knows he's in prison. Esther Villar suggests that qualities often associated with leadership and power, such as strength, intelligence and imagination, might actually make individuals more susceptible to exploitation. Instead of leading to genuine power, these traits could trap individuals into roles of service and hard work, essentially making them slaves to societal expectations and responsibilities. Esther Villar provocatively proposes that those who rule the world are not necessarily the most capable or expert individuals. Instead, she argues that power may reside with those who are not particularly skilled or fit for significant achievements. In her controversial view, women. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Yes. <laughs> the old damsel in distress trick works every time. You need some help? Why should a woman learn to change a flat when the opposite sex, half the world's population, 
is able and willing to do it for her. Esther Villar uses the damsel in distress argument to explain how women manipulate men into doing their bidding. She claims that women, while appearing less involved in the heavy lifting, are the true rulers. Esther Villar's view is that women exercise power through indirect means, leveraging societal structures and relationships to control men and benefit from their labor. One example that illustrates Villar's argument can be found in reality TV. Expedition Robinson, a show that places a group of strangers in an isolated location where they must provide food, fire, and shelter for themselves, offers a clear demonstration. In one episode, a man from the men's camp had to serve in the women's camp and was immediately put to work on tasks they should have done themselves. Zeg, ik heb hier een leuk lijstje. Vissen. En een goed vuur maken. En uh, hout hakken uiteraard. Want ja, fysiek zijn wij toch uh, in de minderheid. Hè? Wij doen echt alleen het hoognodige en wat niet nou, hoeft. Nou, ik dat heb al hout gehakt hoor. Jawel. Ja, ja, nee. maar, ja. uh, Jawel, maar, maar ik bedoel, wij hebben niet bergen nee, en voorraad. Ja. Maar wat wij ook heel graag van je willen, dat is gewoon een goed gesprek en de moreel een beetje ophogen dat, hier. Dat, 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 dat... In contrast, when a woman from the women's camp had to serve in the men's camp, observe the difference. Ik dacht echt dat ik op een droomeiland terecht kwam. Zo'n mooie hut, slaapplaatjes, een eettafel. Echt zo precies een, een cafeetje op het strand. Ik dacht echt van, ah, oh, nu nog een lekkere cocktail. En dat is hier, oh, I'm in heaven. Ik denk dat jullie uh, toch niet bij ons moeten komen, eerlijk. Ik weet niet zijn. Later in that episode, the males have to bail the women out and the camps merge into a mixed group of men and women. Observe the dynamics at what used to be the women's camp. De mannen van Kamp Zuid zijn druk bezig het eiland wat leefbaarder te maken. De vrouwen kijken goedkeurend toe. The women stand by, looking on approvingly. Who benefits the most from this situation? Who is exploited here? Even if the women wanted to help, they would likely prove incompetent, as the tasks the men are undertaking require a level of skill and effort that they lack. You have just witnessed the foundation of the patriarchal system that women voluntarily chose to follow. It's only expected that men risk their lives to protect these women from danger. None of these women would prefer to be stuck on this island with a bear rather than with a man. This episode illustrates why effinists emerge when the world is built and safe. Claiming oppression by men without considering that the world didn't start out with skyscrapers and air conditioning systems. The new generation suffer from amnesia. See how humbling this experience is for the women. I had a recently an interview with a social biologist and he said that if a woman had lived there, she would live in a stone time period. I started to believe more. You should not say that. It's true, look at me. They are really a stone of stone by each other. I don't want to let myself say that. No, I don't want to let myself say that. But it's still so. It's still so, unfortunately. Sorry. This is pure gold. The purest of the purest gold there is. Only the environment can humble women like this. One of the ladies tries to maintain the delusion, but due to the environmental circumstances, the other women refuse to follow her lead. Pure gold. Because they won't survive with that attitude. So these modern women immediately become damsels in distress and let the men do their bidding. This is exactly what will happen if society collapses. Even though these men are also modern, their instincts kick in and show these women who the real prize is. We men, ain't we? Why do women not make use of their intellectual potential? For the simple reason that they do not need to. It is not essential for their survival. Theoretically, it is possible for a beautiful woman to have less intelligence than a chimpanzee and still be considered an acceptable member of society. Fast forward 50 years, society and technology have advanced to a point where traditional gender roles are less pronounced 
and men are no longer directly necessary for many, 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 many tasks that women once relied on them for. With just a few taps on her smartphone, a woman can summon roadside assistance or order services she needs. Birth control has given women unprecedented control over their reproductive health, allowing them to engage in sexual activity without the risk of unwanted pregnancy. The transition from the industrial era to the digital age has created numerous job opportunities that are less physically demanding, enabling women to pursue careers and achieve financial independence. This autonomy allows women to afford services and support that in the past would have been provided by their husbands, further reshaping the dynamics of power and dependence in modern relationships. Despite all these advances, Many, 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 many women will still expect men to adhere to traditional gender roles. In stark contrast, men have always been and continue to be judged primarily by their productivity and ability to provide. A man's worth in society is often linked to his job, his ability to earn, and his contributions. If a man is not productive, he is not seen as an acceptable or valuable member of society. This brings us to the next chapter. What is a man? A man is a human being who works. By working, he supports himself, his wife, and his wife's children. A woman, on the other hand, is a human being who does not work, or at least only temporarily. Most of her life, she supports neither herself nor her children, let alone her husband. Esther Villar dissects the societal constructs that define a man's value and identity, ultimately framing men as both indispensable and exploited within the traditional gender paradigm. A man's worth is measured by his competence and ability to provide. Villar suggests that women view men primarily through the lens of utility. Masculine qualities are those that serve women's needs, whether it's financial support, protection, or physical labor. Men are valued for what they can do rather than who they are. Human doing you are, human being you are not. That's why the more a woman has, the more she will expect a man to provide. And in current times, women will speak the truth about how they feel their worth is based on their ability to secure a man who can offer even more than they already possess. The more utility she can provide for herself, the higher her expectations become for what a man should bring to the table. There shouldn't be no reason why you can't say, I don't want to date a bus driver. You know why? Mm -hmm. You're a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You're, you did your education. You've done your work. You've been on television. You're still on television. And you probably don't want that kind of man. And that's okay. If you're not helping me with 90% of the things I need help with, why? Why are you here? Because I'm like, <laughs> I, I can do it for myself. So then, why are you here? I feel like I have done so much work on myself. I have built a beautiful life for myself. I'm happy with my life where I'm at, my job. I'm successful, I'm independent. I'm healthier than I've ever been. I take such good care of myself. Truly, the only thing I'm missing in my life is someone to enjoy it with. And I'm so sick of waiting. Like, when is it going to be my turn? No, one can hardly assume men do all this for pleasure and without feeling a desire for change. They do it because they have been manipulated into doing it. Their whole life is nothing but a series of conditioned reflexes, a series of animal acts. A man who is no longer able to perform these acts, whose earning capacity is lessened, is considered a failure. He stands to lose everything, wife, family, home, his whole purpose in life. All the things, in fact, which give him security. It's interesting to see how Esther Villar's words are playing out in current times. Men are shamed from every angle for not performing their so-called duties. Because men are useless. But fail to address that the societal changes have significantly impacted the dynamics between men and women. The traditional carrot and stick approach is no longer effective. When Esther Villar wrote The Manipulated Man, it was feasible to support a family on one income. But times have changed. Men are opting out of the workforce at unforeseen rates. 
for many, 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 it's not an issue of not being able to find a job. They have simply opted out altogether. The Bureau of Labor Statistics found that only 89% of working age men have a job or are actively looking for work. In 1950, that number was at 97%, while the early 1950s saw around 96% of working age men between the ages of 25 and 54 working full or part-time jobs. That proportion has now moved to just 86%, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Additionally, only half of single men are actively seeking relationships or even casual dates, according to Pew. This shift suggests that the traditional motivations for men, such as providing for a family and fulfilling societal roles, are losing their influence. As women become more self-sufficient and societal expectations evolve, the pressure on men to conform to these outdated roles is becoming increasingly unsustainable. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. Esther Villar's assertion that men are manipulated into their roles through societal conditioning is evident in how these roles are being rejected in modern times. Then on top of that, as if you're not trying to spend money, you have to. And everything's expensive. I own a painting company. I still can't make it. I'm trying, man. I can't look at my daughter and my wife and know I'm failing. Men's traditional expectations discourage them from expressing emotions and instead emphasize the pursuit of success, power, and competition. Studies show that men who feel they cannot meet these traditional expectations often suffer from major psychological problems. All right, now to an alarming trend on the rise the in the construction industry. New research showing that construction workers are dying by suicide at an alarming rate. While demand for construction workers continues to surge, the profession has one of the highest rates. That's according to data from the CDC. Fathers are expected to be strong, stoic breadwinners, and the difficulties they face are often invisible to others. Let's listen to what this man says in the following clip. Hey, guys. I really appreciate everybody, um, you know, watching my video and, uh, you know, liking and following me and commenting and, you know, d instant messaging me and telling me, you know, that I'm loved and that I'm not alone and we're all feeling the same way. And uh, I've had other people, you know, say things like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, you're a man, you know, da-da-da-da-da, whatever. I, I don't care about that stigma. What I care about is this and how your guys' heads are as well. Men are conditioned by society to suppress their emotions because showing vulnerability is seen as a sign of weakness. This stigma is often perpetuated by women who need men to remain breadwinners, providers, regardless of their emotional state. I hope his wife doesn't see this video of him crying. And if he does, and let's say he starts crying, tears up, or really starts crying, she inevitably will have this reaction of, I don't feel safe when he doesn't open up to me because I don't feel connected to him, but I don't feel safe when he's that vulnerable with me either because there's something, just some cultural programming in her around what it's like to be with a man who's crying or a man who is vulnerable. Despite women's increased earning power, many, 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 many of them would still rather be single mothers than financially support a man. This aligns with Vila's concept of conditioned roles. No matter what a man's job may be, bookkeeper, doctor, bus driver, or managing director, every moment of his life will be spent as a cog in a huge and pitiless system, a system designed to exploit him to the utmost, to his dying day. So what is the role of, the, of a man? You, it, it's really unclear. By the age of 12 at the latest, most women have decided to become pro- Or, to put it another way, they have planned a future for themselves 
which consists of choosing a man and letting him do all the work. In return for his support, they are prepared to let him make use of their vagina at certain given intervals. The minute a woman has made this decision, she ceases to develop her mind. She may, of course, go on to obtain various degrees and diplomas. Esther Villar does not pull any punches when it comes to describing women. The word stupid or its variants are repeated over and over again, triggering a lot of people, especially women. Frau Villar, ich habe also gestern sehr genau mir noch mal Ihre Bücher angeschaut und ich habe gesehen unter anderem darin, dass ich nach Ihrer Definition ein sogenanntes öffentliches Kind bin. Ja, das sind Sie. Richtig, das also, ich werde gleich noch den Zuschauerinnen und Zuschauern erklären, was das ist, wenn sie es nicht gelesen haben, äh, dessen wichtigste Berufslegitimation die Vagina ist. Ein öffentliches Kind ist nach ihrer Definition eine der Frauen, die also den Männern, die das alles erfunden haben, nachplappert. Frauen ging es ja so schlecht und sie müssten sich emanzipieren. Ja. Und äh, was wir da schreiben und sagen, das ist der größte Unsinn und wenn wir keine Frauen wären, dann können wir das alles gar nicht schreiben. Ich muss sagen, gelinde gesagt, ich fühle mich doch schlicht diffamiert von Ihnen. Ich könnte mir übrigens vorstellen, dass nach dem Gesetzbuch sowas, äh, dass es möglich ist, sowas strafrechtlich zu verfolgen oder solche ja, Geschichten. Es versuchen. Könnte ich mir vorstellen. Möchte. When Esther Villar wrote The Manipulated Man in 1971, the feminist and women's liberation movement were at a peak, advocating fiercely for gender equality and challenging traditional roles. These movements were highly vocal and influential, pushing for societal changes with bold and often uncompromising rhetoric. In this context, Villar's work can be seen as a counterpoint, employing provocative language to critique and provoke discussion about these issues. I personally don't think women are stupid, but I believe women are more like children in adult bodies. Research shows that the male brain differs from the female brain. In adulthood, male brains are on average 10% to 15% larger than female brains even after adjusting for body height. Studies indicate that some fundamental molecular pathways in the brain operate differently in males and females, and not just by a little. It's clear that men and women not only think differently, but are also triggered differently. You're all right. You're not going to die. You are not going to die. It came right towards me like that. Just like my hands. I have a hairdresser. And like, I can't afford this. Oh my gosh. It's just so hard. And I'm not going to leave this. So I've got this bit. I don't know how many days. Women often cry when times get hard, and society generally accepts that it's okay for women to cry. However, it goes deeper than that. According to research, women's stress levels are 50% higher than men's. Women and girls are twice as likely to experience depression compared to men and boys. And women are 40% more likely than men to develop mental illness in general. The biological differences between men and women are often overlooked to support the equality narrative. It's like comparing apples to oranges. It's often when stress levels are high that all the social graces fall away. Uh, and it's also when tempers fray. They've got to learn quickly how to communicate better as a team. Reality shows like Survivor demonstrate time and time again that when women and men are operating in separate camps, the men's camp is orderly, structured, and cooperative, whereas the women's camp struggles with basic tasks, argue amongst themselves, and lack harmony. If only man would stop for one moment in his heedless rush toward progress and think about this state of affairs, he would inevitably realize that his efforts to give woman a sense of mental stimulation have been totally in vain. It is true that woman gets progressively more elegant, more well-groomed, more cultured, but her demands on life will always be material, never intellectual. Villar's harsh descriptions of women sound shocking if you were raised to view women from a romantic perspective and believe that women are oppressed by men. This romantic perspective is essential because it's hard for men to love and care for women when they understand them. 
when they see women for what they truly are. The truth is, women naturally look for status, wealth, and power. That's where their loyalty lies. There is new research that shows half of all women have a guy on the back burner just in case things go wrong in their current relationship. Dr. Romy, seriously? Good morning, Tom. I know. and I Come on, like this sounds positively guy. It sounds positively guy. 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 In modern times, the truth about female nature is clear as daylight. We're living in the age of information. Statistics and data are collected daily and women expose themselves on social media, proving their materialistic and hypergamous nature. The discourse around modern women's oppression often highlights the lack of female representation in high-profile positions like CEOs, as depicted in the Barbie movie. However, there is little focus on the lower-ranking but essential jobs that keep society functioning, such as construction, sanitation, and manual labor, which are predominantly held by men and typically less desired by women. Furthermore, the outcry about gender inequality tends to surface primarily when women are perceived as being disadvantaged. For instance, we only seem to hear crickets when it comes to the discussion about men being restricted from leaving the country due to the war in Ukraine. The selective outrage overlooks the broader spectrum of gender-related issues, particularly those that disproportionately affect men. If women really felt oppressed by men, they would have developed hate and fear for them, as the oppressed always do. But women do not fear men, much less hate them. If they really felt humiliated by men's mental superiority, they would have used every means in their power to change the situation. If women really felt unfree, surely, at such a favorable time in their history, they would have broken free of their oppressors. This foolishness is mirrored in the Barbie movie, Barbie chooses to become a human being in the real world instead of staying in the perfect utopia of Barbie land. In the real world, the first thing Barbie does is get a vagina. This proves Villar right. Women do not feel oppressed. It's the problem that has no name by Betty Friedan. Women want to have that cake and eat it too. They want to do whatever they feel, and that's not how the real world works, which is driving them nuts. That's why women's happiness has been on a steady decline for over 60 years. The more freedom women get, the more responsibilities they must take on. The more choices women have, the harder it is to make a decision. The paradox of choice is making them miserable. It's interesting to see that it's men who are now the ones who are walking away. They are not giving up. They just found another purpose that is worth their time, money, and energy. That's what the art of walking away is all about. As the Villar says, a man is always searching for someone or something to enslave him. For only as a slave does he feel secure. And as a rule, his choice falls on a woman. You no longer have to be a slave to women, guys. Instead, men now have the freedom to choose how they want to live their lives. Engaging with women or prioritizing oneself is a choice, not a necessity. Walking away is not about giving up or being bitter. It's about doing what's best for you and finding happiness on your terms. This life has many, 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 many beautiful things to offer. From pursuing passions and hobbies to traveling the world, and building meaningful relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. Embrace your journey and remember that your happiness and well-being are paramount. Patreon supporters salute! Man, it's we work it. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.